Hi, welcome back to Engineer Your Space. I'm Isabel. In my last episode, I shared with you the beginning of my balcony makeover, where I covered up the walls and put in some privacy and shade panels. Now for this phase of the makeover, I needed to take care of furniture and accessories. So today I'm going to show you how I built this storage lounging bench and all the other little DIY projects that I did to really make my little balcony feel like a cozy outdoor room. I can't wait to show you how it all came together, so let's get started. Even though my balcony is only 35 square feet, I was determined to make the most out of it and not only have it be a place where I could lounge, but also a place where I could eat and have a small garden. Now for my lounging area, I wanted a bench that also incorporated some storage, but I couldn't find one that was exactly the right size for my balcony, so I ended up having to make my own. I first built a base by making five simple frames using 2x3s that I had cut at the hardware store. I used corner clamps to hold the boards together to drill pilot holes and put in the screws. And I used a speed square to get a 90 degree angle for the middle board. To make the base, I joined the frames together by using clamps to drill pilot holes and put in the screws. You want to put them in at the outer edge to line up with a narrow vertical board and high enough to avoid the existing screws. I painted the base with a solid white weatherproofing stain and I added some feet at the bottom of the base to keep it off the ground to help with water drainage. I used 1x6 boards to cover the base, leaving the back and one side uncovered to save a little bit on materials. I started with the front, placing the first board flush with the bottom of the base, leaving an overhang the thickness of the sideboard. I drilled pilot holes before putting in the decking screws, and I used a quarter inch thick spacer in between the boards to leave a lip to cover up the top boards. For the top of the bench, I started by attaching two boards at the back and then one at the front. Then I made an access panel by joining together 1x6 boards using furring strips and I made sure to place them inside enough so that they don't hit the base when the panel is closed. Then I drilled holes to make a really simple handle with string. I attached the panel to the backboard with hinges, leaving a space at the front to allow the panel to open easily. I used this space to store my gardening supplies and scrap wood from my projects, but you could also use plastic bins or even the large Ziploc bags to store items that you want to stay dry. The last thing I did for the bench was to add a cushion that I made with outdoor foam and outdoor fabric. And I'll have a link at the end of the episode that you can click on to see how I made a similar cushion. Now the next project that I tackled is the table for the outdoor dining area. And again, I couldn't find a table that was exactly the right size. So this time I ended up taking an inexpensive outdoor table from Ikea and giving it a makeover. I gave the base a more antique look using rub and buff in antique gold. Wearing gloves, I used a rag to rub the product on, then I let it dry and buffed it with a clean rag. If the finish wears off over time, you can easily touch it up with more rub and buff. And if you need to remove it, acetone works great for that. This table was a little bit smaller than what I wanted, so I ended up making a top that just slips over the existing table to make it larger. To make it, I added iron-on edging to a piece of half-inch plywood that I had cut at the hardware store. And then I trimmed off the excess edging with a utility knife. I wanted the top to look a little bit more substantial, so I glued 1x2 boards to the plywood using wood glue and clamps. To keep the top in place, I added furring strips underneath the top to fit the length of the existing table, and screwed in place wood shims that pivot so that they can be extended back out after the top is on. I filled the gap between the wood shims and the existing table with more wood shims, and then I screwed them to the underside of the table so that the new top would stay in place. The last thing I did was paint the top white and add glass mosaic tiles to the edges. I removed the tiles from the backing and then used pieces of clear double-sided indoor-outdoor tape from Echo Tape to glue them to the side. Then all that was left to do was to add a chair and my alfresco dining area was complete. Next was the garden, and one of the things I've always wanted is a nerve garden. But I didn't want it to take up too much space, so I ended up making one that hangs on the wall using these tin planters and a trellis. To make it, I rested the planters on the horizontal rungs, drilled pilot holes through the tin and the trellis, and put in decking screws. Then I attached it to the wall caps and added my favorite herbs. The next part of the makeover were the finishing touches, and I really wanted to make my small balcony feel like a cozy outdoor room. So I hung some art on the lattice wall, and then I hung this really pretty lantern from Ikea using an S-hook and some chain that I secured to a wood dowel that I placed inside the ceiling cavity, and then rested the other end on the lattice wall using some screws to keep it from sliding off. 
The last thing I added was this really cute outdoor wireless Bluetooth speaker to add some ambiance music to really complete the transformation from a plain and boring balcony to a warm and inviting oasis that's now my favorite spot to hang out in my apartment, day or night. Well, that's it for today's episode. If you want to see part one of this balcony makeover, you can click on this video. And if you're looking to see how I made a bench cushion similar to the one that you saw in this episode, you can click on this video. And for more information on the bench, like dimensions and materials that I use, you can go to my website, engineeryourspace.com. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my upcoming episodes. See you next time.